my father was a, a British soldier that came to South Africa during the Second World War. And then he met my mother up in the then Transkei. My father was white, but my mother was a black woman. There was this uh, question that they could not live together. But my father, uh, so to say, because he has already married my mother. And then they started abusing him. The worst time of my childhood was they, when they actually arrested my mother. And they took her away and we cried. It was because uh, my mother got married to uh, this white person. By 18, I was actually, actually really uh, actively involved in some of the underground things that happened uh, during those years. They were teaching us uh, how to, 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 to use a gun. We were supposed to be the couriers, the cash would be dropped at a certain place and they could not be transported by vehicle. So we had to carry them. The most serious thing that I did was to break the policeman's neck when we were uh, actually transporting uh, arms. I don't think I regret any of those actions because then uh, uh, our lives, not only my life, but even that of other people during those years, uh, most of the time we could not enter into shops we couldn't enter. There are certain places that we could not enter. There was a shootout uh, between us and the SANDF. The police only came became involved uh, later because I was stabbed with a, 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 a bayonet, and uh, they thought that I was dead because I was actually ducking uh, to avoid the, the soldier. And they stabbed me here, and I lost a lot of blood. So I became unconscious, and then the police came, they picked me up, they took me to the mortuary, and they put me in there. The cold uh, woke me up, and then I started hammering on the door, dwa, 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 and then the policeman came. Actually, I don't know whether it was a routine, and then he opened the door, and then I was sitting upright, and then he closed it again and ran to fetch his friend. And when the friend came, his colleague, he said to him, let's finish him off. And then they said, no. They took me into, deten into, into detention. They officially arrested me. And then they started uh, torturing me. The tortures they used, they actually made some of us confess uh, that uh, we did uh, uh, commit the atrocities or the crime they alleged you did. They would take your toes or your foot, put it into a vice grip, and then take a mallet and hit your toes with it and take a long nose flyer, and they will pull your nails. Then they charged me for sabotage, and then working with the Bayern organization, trying to leave the country illegally. And terrorism was actually one of those charges that they had. Well, when we got to Robben Island, at first uh, we were confused. Because at the, at the harbour where we got off the boat, uh, we were met by waters with dogs, and the dogs were barking at us, and the waters were shouting us, actually confusing us much more. And then we were loaded into a van, and we were taken up to prison. When those the waters closed, those doors behind us, uh, we started crying. And uh, we thought that, hey, we won't get out of this place alive. The 2176 was my name, and it replaced Tom Moses as from the 6th of December, 1976, <coughs> until the day I was released. And that number, uh, if you did not respond as a prisoner to that number, then they will punish you. They will come to you at night and fetch you with the dogs, and they come to the stone quarry, and that is where you will chop stones until the following morning. That stone quarry and the lime quarry was actually the place that uh, actually made quite a number of us crack on Robben Island because uh, the tension was bad. They take uh, uh, two electrical uh, clips and they clip it to your balls and then they switch it on and off. Mandela and them would, would treat it the same way as all other prisoners were treated. Uh, when they were exercising in their courtyard, 
he will shout uh, and we were locked up in C-section. He will shout to us words of encouragement. So to us he became that father figure and that inspirator, that symbol of hope. That is what he became to us. Some of the political prisoners during those years died uh, because of the wrong medication that was prescribed to political prisoners. And I wouldn't like to use the word murder, but one is tempted to say that uh, the doctors of those years played quite a role in the death of some of our political prisoners. There was one prisoner that I got attached to, and the night when he returned, he could not speak. The next morning when they opened up, Mpurkle died. He passed away. And up till this very day, we don't know what was the cause of death. But some of the other political prisoners that were, that passed away on Robben Island too, though some of them we can say safely that some of them died of natural causes, but quite a number of them died because uh, the doctors played God. It is right to, 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 to talk about all those bad things. The government is committed to bring about through negotiation a new constitution which is fair and just to all the people of South Africa. I hope that now that this chapter has ended, that the world and more especially all the people of South Africa will grasp the opportunity and play whatever supportive role can be played towards a peaceful conclusion to the process which has started. Even a person like uh, Ude Klerk, Klerk, yes, he was the one that ultimately released political prisoners and Nelson Mandela from prison. But I think now uh, the Klerk also should be that person that takes responsibility or say to the world, but what we did was wrong. The Dutch Reform Church is one of those churches that actually has up till now not yet accepted uh, their responsibility or part in subjugating and actually uh, humiliating black people uh, during those years of apartheid. And even now, they are not even willing to accept the Bel Harbor ladiness that states or declares uh, apartheid evil or sin.